Have you ever heard that smelling fresh flowers can also become addictive? Moreover, this addictive behavior is no different in its essence from drug addiction. All behaviors have the potential for addiction. If a certain item or behavior satisfies the following two traits, it can be considered addictive. It is not a necessity for survival. The user becomes anxious and uneasy when they are away from it. According to this definition, a cancer patient using medication cannot be considered drug addicted, and an ordinary person breathing air cannot be called air addicted. However, activities like gambling, love, sex, shopping, and internet use, among others, have the potential for addiction. If we want to eradicate bad habits, we need to identify the central points and bottlenecks of addiction. The central point is the key aspect you should pay attention to. For example, if you want to wake up early, it's not so much about focusing on the time you wake up, you should pay more attention to what time you go to bed. If you go to bed too late, you will lack sleep, and it will be challenging to wake up early the next day. The bottleneck is the obstacle that prevents you from achieving your goal. It could be a reason that hinders you from going to bed early, such as working late into the night due to high stress or being unable to resist constantly using your phone. This is the bottleneck for breaking the bad habit. To find ways to overcome this bottleneck, you need to devise specific measures. When breaking bad habits, we should emphasize the process rather than just reaching the goal. If you focus too much on the end goal, you may slack off once you achieve it. For example, if your goal is to lose 20 pounds, you might become complacent once you reach that weight. This is also why many people experience weight rebound after losing weight. Instead, if you value the process, enjoy the journey of breaking the bad habit, and appreciate the improvement in yourself, you will be more inclined to maintain that feeling and continue the positive progress. Self-discipline doesn't happen overnight. Failing to meet your goal one or two times during the process won't ruin the progress you've made so far. For example, if your goal is to quit junk food, but you break the habit for a friend's birthday dinner this week, you can still get back to your original eating habits the next day. During the process of breaking bad habits, we should reduce excessive guilt and self-blame. These negative emotions can lower your self-esteem and lead to a resurgence of bad habits. The optimal time for a person to develop a habit is 21 days. In other words, if you consistently do something for 21 days, you can likely develop it into a habit. Many people, once they break the chain within the 21 days, tend to give up altogether. Especially if you've endured several days of effort and suddenly get interrupted, the subconscious might think your efforts were in vain, leading to the belief that you have to start all over again for another 21 days. This can create fear and reluctance to attempt a new 21-day cycle. The idea of forming a habit in 21 days might have to be put aside. If you plan a 21-day habit-forming strategy and one day you feel lazy or lack confidence in completing the task, you can give yourself a day off. Instead, try to find motivation from the significance of forming that habit and seek the willpower to continue. Also, don't get discouraged just because of one lazy or interrupted day. Look at the bigger picture, you aim to have this habit for the long term, not just for these 21 days of keeping track. At least give yourself three chances to try. Adults should have the courage to start anew. Failure is not frightening, what's scary is not daring to start again. It's natural to stumble and make mistakes multiple times, but that shouldn't discourage you from trying again. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.